I've got a test set up here uh, to show you differences between this box, the return loss bridge box, and this return loss uh, board. Uh, we have a uh, precision load here. It's a defective one, but the uh, guy was selling them as uh, uh, ones that go clear up to about 2 gigahertz, thereabouts, maybe maybe higher. Uh, but uh, then fall apart. They were supposed to be uh, five or six gigahertz, I believe. Anyway, so he says well, they're they're perfectly fine for use at the lower uh, frequencies. And uh, so I bought one. Uh, it uh, seems to do the job. Uh, this curve shows what it does at twelve hundred megahertz. It's about uh, thirty five dB at twelve ninety six there, and um, forty dB at uh, let's see, 12, uh, well, 1260 or so, and uh, uh, 1298 or so. Uh, no, actually, much higher than that. But anyway, point is, it's it's uh, shows a good. If I put it on this port, what you're going to see is that curve. So the the load is good. There's no problem with it. All right. So this is the um, band pass filter N6TX designed many years ago and built. And I uh, bought it from him. Um, or actually, it was part of a uh, linear translator that we had for satellite development years ago. And uh, this is the curve that I took off of it, and I've saved all of this. So if I go to trace uh, trace one here, you'll see it's it's frozen. And if I go to two or three, it'll they'll also be frozen. And so that's been saved. That's been saved. That's been saved separately and uh, calibrated separately for each test. And so they're all on the screen at one time here. And then I've, uh, on the markers here, like marker four is uh, from trace three. Well, this is trace three. The blue trace is trace three. And so all of those are on trace three. I could have put them on two, which is the or, uh, yellow, or uh, or I could have put them down here. But anyway, um the blue trace, which is the uh, most accurate it looks like, um, is with the uh, box right here. The yellow trace is this unit uh, used with the precision load over from here placed on the uh, reference port. And uh, it's only about 20 to 25 dB over this spread of uh, return loss with the precision load, which indicates that the board itself is where the issue is, not the uh, 40 dB return loss load. So um, that gives an idea that uh, this box is clearly superior to this uh, board at these upper frequencies. So I just thought I'd show you that. Uh, we uh, uh, This is supposed to not have much gain at 1268 megahertz. And that can be seen here that we have a very poor return loss, 0.96, right here. So uh, clearly that is uh, probably way down the uh, the uh, curve of the bandpass of this, because the bandpass would be more or less opposite of what we have re for return loss here. Uh, and uh, this is the one and a half dB points on two and four, and that's at. Uh, 1288 and uh, 1298, so roughly 10 megahertz. Um, so that uh, that tells you uh, what the bandpass filter is good for use over. And at 1296, it's obviously uh, 35 and almost 36 dB. So it's a very good match at that frequency because that's what I've optimized it for. So I thought you'd like to see that uh, as far as how this box works versus this board at uh, at the upper end of the uh, 1500 megahertz uh, range in the spectrum analyzer at 23 centimeters or 1296 megahertz. So I want to show you something else uh, on the screen here. I have this stored and uh, as you can see if I go to trace 2 here you see it's uh, fr frozen. Uh, if I go to trace 3, it's also frozen, and uh, trace 1 is also frozen. So uh, I have things in memory here, and I can um, actually on the 
DSA 815, I can take a look at that and, and expand it out or even change the frequency as long as these are all stored. Nothing's going to sweep again, so it will maintain the memory as it is. As an example, I'll hit span here. I'm at 100 megahertz, as you see. Let's make that 50 megahertz. 5-0 megahertz. And you see it expanded out to uh, 50 megahertz uh, total. The span is 50 megahertz. And uh, you'll see some, one of the markers went uh, off frequency, I mean off the edge here. But uh, you still have the markers there. And um, this is now saying 1271 because that's the edge of the screen now. Uh, so uh, it's measuring it correctly. It's at minus minus one. Um, 0.25 dB, but it's not where we set it. Um, anyways, the, I've got 1296 right in the middle here, and I could uh, uh, shift this around if I want by hitting frequency and just uh, tune it around. But because we went off the edge of the screen here, uh, this is still at 1271 uh, megahertz. Now let uh, let me try something else here. If I hit marker, that's number one. Okay. Uh, I should possibly be able to uh, set that frequency. No, not the center frequency. Marker frequency, excuse me. I should possibly be able to move marker one. Yes, I can. So I can go back to 1268 which is our local oscillator, oscillator frequency. So I can get uh, get that back corrected uh, by doing that. So now you see that the, even though this is over here now, uh, we, we do have the total response here. And again, I can uh, go back to span here and up to the limit of the uh, point at which things start to pixelate, uh, this will work fine. Let's go to... Uh, a span of not 50, but 25 megahertz. There you go. So I've expanded out more, but now you see the pixelation starting to happen in here. Uh, because there's only certain uh, steps that have been stored, and that's what this uh, display is based on. There's 680, I believe, across the screen. Something like that. But anyway, uh, so... You could expand further. Let's go to 10 megahertz. 10 megahertz. Now you see it's really pixelated. And again, I can change the frequency down to the center here. And your markers start getting screwed up too, uh, like it did before. But here's, here it is. But it's, you know, it tells you the story, but it doesn't, uh, it's, it's definitely pixelated at that point. So that's just a feature of this uh, Regal uh, Spectrum Analyzer you can use if you need to. You can uh, take one wide um, pass at the thing and then narrow it down and narrow it down for two different pictures or three different pictures as, as you wish to do. Uh, so that's uh, a feature some of you may have discovered and some of you may not have discovered. And I thought I'd just uh, show it in this uh, short video.